Ford. It's been amazing, amazing experience. But it wasn't until Katie Lee, and I don't know if Katie's here, I served on the board with Katie. She was our player rep serving on the AJJ board, and she basically pulled me aside after one board meeting and said, you know, Mr. Arnold, you got to get in the game and get with the program and start serving and supporting women's golf. So I was like, okay, got it. I'll keep that in mind. And then thankfully, I got in touch with Annika and Mike, um, Annika's husband, and they asked me to come on board to be part of the foundation. So it's a true honor to be a part of this initiative. As many of you know, and although some of the parents may not know, the foundation really is trying to develop and empower young women all over the world to pursue their dreams through the game of golf, which I think is an amazing, amazing initiative. And um, one thing I was thinking about with the foundation, you know, they do these clinics, not just clinics like today, but they do clinics to introduce young girls to the game of golf all around the country and different parts of the world. They do these junior invitationals to help you all advance your careers. Annika now, you know, does the uh, college event, hosts the college event, which has become the premier women's college event on this NCA schedule. And now she's hosting an LPJ Tour event. Now the foundation will benefit from that, we're not running that. Um, but basically she's creating a pathway for you all to pursue your dreams from starting you know, at a young age through junior golf, collegiate golf, and now pro golf, which is really, really amazing. But what I think is most important, especially for the parents, it's not just golf inside the ropes. You kind of picked this up a little bit in the clinic today. She's really dedicated to helping you all become better young women, better people, build your character, build your confidence, shape your values, so you can be a better contributor to society. And that's what I admire so much, what the foundation's trying to do. And my last comment is Stephen Hamblin, the head of the AJGA, said something to me about Annika over the past couple weeks that just I'll, I'll always remember. He said, you know, she's the greatest of all time, amazing, you know, what she's accomplished inside the ropes. But what she's done after she's, quote, retired from full time competitive golf has even been more impressive. She's built a brand, she's built businesses. She's built this foundation to give back to people like you all and many others that will come behind you. I mean, he's, and she's a mother of a beautiful family, wife. Oh, and she's still playing competitive golf from time to time. I mean, if you ever thought as a young woman, can you have it all? I would say, yes, you can, just based on what Annika's done. So keep your dreams alive, keep pursuing, keep achieving. Thank you very much. Without further ado, I'd like to introduce Annika Sorenstam. Oh, thank you, Rob. You were hired. I guess you already are, but thank you. Um, great to be here, everybody. And uh, thank you for staying. How was the food? Pretty good? I see a lot of ice cream there. I hope this birdie ice cream gives you some energy for tomorrow. Um, I am not going to do a lot of the talking today because we invited a special guest, a player that I think some of you already know who she is. Um, some of you met her out there, talked a little bit, took some photos. Uh, but this young player has been, um, she's been in your shoes about 15 years ago. She played in our event and she's gone on to have an amazing career and uh, followed Danielle's um, Pat quite closely, a big fan, a friend of Danielle's, and I asked her, how about you come and speak for the girls here? They're really looking up to you. You know, one of the best players on the LPJ, Soham Cup, major winner, champions about six times. So, and without hesitation, Danielle said, sure, tell me where to be, when to be, and here she is. So I just want to welcome Danielle, Danielle Kang up to stage. You get the, yeah, you want to sit or you want to? I can stand. Yeah, all right. Well, thank you for coming. Well, I mean, when Annika texts you, you respond <laughs> real fast. <laughs> when, um, where'd you come from? When did you get in? I flew to Jupiter, mm -hmm. um, spent some time there for a little bit, I could make to the weather, the Bermuda grass, and then 
I came in here on Sunday. All right. And um, so everybody knows um, the Nell is here for the LPGA Tournament of Champions that's starting this week. Um, not just a champion, but the defending champion. So it's very special to have you here. But I thought maybe we'd just talk a little bit about, um, obviously you've gone through similar what these young players are doing and you have pursued on to a career. And I thought, why don't we just, maybe not start at the beginning, but at least talk a little bit about, you played in our event uh, a few years ago. If you want to just kind of share with these players your experience and you know, playing a little bit AJJ golf, et cetera, because many of them are right there. Hi girls. <laughs> so for me, I I wasn't the typical uh, golf nut when I when I grew up. So I wasn't you know looking up to a lot of different players. And one of the things that I remember the most about junior golf was Annika Invitational. And I'm not just saying that because Annika's standing here. I played AJGA, and I actually never won a single AJGA tournament. And I thought if you weren't a good junior golfer, you were never going to be a good professional golfer. But when I went to the Annika Invitational, I sat on the first row and I had I saw Annika Sorenstam for the first time in my life and I was so excited and I didn't want to be called on and then she called on me to do a little interview and she asked, what are you doing here? And I said, playing golf. She goes, yes, well, let's elaborate. <laughs> and then from there, I um, that stuck with me for the rest of my life was because I want to be able to stand up in front of a crowd and explain why I'm here, how I got here, and your foundation helped me do that. So um, I'm really thankful for her foundation on how much she's grown the game and it's taken us to the right direction. I, I guess my transition from junior golf to amateur golf was a bit easier than amateur golf to professional golf. You know, I was ranked, I think, world number one by the time I was amateur to turn pro, and. It took a few years for me to win, but I think it's really important on how to learn how the game etiquette, you guys teach them etiquette on how the game works, how etiquette on and off the golf course, how you approach the game, and you know, they always have, I don't know, resources on how to play better and how to be better, and I think that's really important. And um, what else can I say? No, that's good. Um, yeah, no, it's, um, I can relate to that being shyness, but it's amazing what golf and confidence and, you know, following your dreams just kind of build your character and, and your courage a little bit. I, I remember when I grew up and hold the microphone, and you probably feel the same, but now you do do it quite a few times. You won several times on the LPJ. Would you mind sharing with these players how, like from, like you mentioned, going to the college. Many of these young girls are looking at colleges. Many of them have already you know, committed, what, what should they think about or what's the biggest difference? I mean, here they play as an individual and then it's team and then obviously we can talk about being professional with an individual again, but going to college, I mean, how, how is college life and you have any fun stories and, and maybe what, what should they think about? Yeah, so for me, in my personal opinion, I think college is a great experience, whether it's a year or two or you want to finish to get a degree, it's up to you. But for me, I went for a year and a half and I will never take that back because I met my coach. Um, she's my Pepperdine golf coach and I learned so much from her by playing for her. And when you girls go to college, I know it's an individual sport for learning that team vibe, the being able to have a teammate leaning on each other on scores and stuff. It might come in handy when you guys play Solheim Cup one day. It might come in handy when you play match play. You, It's, a, it's kind of a lonely sport sometimes. You're out there by yourself, you're talking by yourself. I'm pretty sure everyone in this room knows exactly what I mean when you're talking by yourself on the golf course. You know, you're talking to the golf ball and what you could have done, what you should have done. And I think having a teammate means, you know, you have a backbone, you have a buffer and it gives you confidence. So college really helped me learn having a friend is a big, big asset. Um, so having a good caddy coach, um, you know, friends out there. I learned that through college, and I hope that you girls don't take college so seriously as in you have to be the best college player in the world. You don't have to be. You don't have to win everything. You don't have to execute everything the way you want to. You just have so many opportunities, even in the pro life or even in the amateur life, that you just have to keep creating opportunities to execute the shot that you want to and be able to win and all that. Be kidding yourself in contention, and that's what. Anika taught me how to do is when I called her all frustrated saying I'm not winning often I'm not doing this and blah 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 and 
she just said, you know, you gotta keep yourself in contention, you gotta be patient. And that P word has been stuck with me all my life, being patient. <laughs> I'm sure you girls hear it, be patient. Yeah, I heard it today too, so. Yeah, we did, and actually we talked a little bit on the, in the clinic about, because you and I, we had a discussion, you felt like you were kind of a slow starter, remember you, uh, so Danielle, she analyzed her game and she realized that her final round, your average score was so much lower than the first three rounds. And, and she always felt like I'm, I'm coming from behind every time. And we talked about that today, how important it is when you go out round one to literally put the pedal down right in the beginning and not wait until the last, um, the last round, which I know we talked about it. I mean, you want to share that with them a little bit too, how kind of your mindset on that and how it's changed. And I mean, you've done... You had a great year. I do. So my game actually have improved a lot in the last couple of years. Um, she says, you know, you have to go with your personality. I'm more of a go-getter. I chase players down. I like I like the hunt. I, I'm i more comfortable hunting down a leader than being in the lead. And I think that's coming from keeping the foot on the gas and being able to charge. And that's why my scoring on Saturday, Sunday was much better than Thursday, Friday. And when Annika gave me an advice that pretend Thursday was Saturday, I just put the foot on the gas, didn't worry about the cut and just went for it. And I actually won back to back weeks as soon as I went back out there in 2020. And it was actually all thanks to Annika was because I wouldn't have had that mindset um, when I'm I started. I'm still waiting for that check to nail you know. <laughs> I got your flag. <laughs> well, we appreciate you being here. No, it's great. I mean, you might think that just because you're a professional, you think, wow, you got it all figured out and you know everything. But every day is a learning experience. I mean, you've now been on tour for, what, 12 years? 12 years. And I'm still learning. And there's always going to be someone that can teach you how to be better. And I don't think it ever hurts to ask questions. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that I'm actually good at is it's hard to just call up a friend or someone you're not that close with or even calling up the GOAT, Annika, being like, hey, my putting isn't that great. Like, that's not something easy to do, but I sometimes do it because I know that she might have the answer. And people are out there, you know, they're also your fans as well, and they want you to do well. And sometimes I just give more trust in people, and that's where I'm very thankful for Annika. And I hope you girls are there for each other and be able to help each other get better. And that's the only way you guys will grow faster and be a better player um, than doing it on your own. So what would you say is the most fun of being out on tour? I mean, it could be a little bit of a grind, but is there something here that you want to share that you, like, I mean, why do you do this every day? I mean, I was, yesterday, I, well, two days ago, I was putting, it was windy and it was cold and, you know, I don't, don't practice as much as I used to, but my husband, Mike, came up and, and there were some other players putting too, and he goes, why would we be out here? What do you get for being out here? And I looked at him, you get better. <laughs> and I'm just trying to think of, you know, we're out there every day, uh, you more so than I am nowadays, but you're out there every day grinding and grinding. I mean, what is it that motivates you? And maybe you can share a little bit some of your goals for 23. So I've never been very direct with my goals and I've always kept them to myself, but I don't want to be afraid of saying that I want to be world number one. That's, mm -hmm. that's the reason why I play. That's why I'm out there every day, because I know that I can be, and that's how I truly believe. So the more that I practice, the more that I execute, the more drills I finish, I feel very satisfied that I'm one step closer. Um, sometimes you might drop in ranking, sometimes you might feel further away than you want to be, but it's, it's, that's the grind that I love, is that I might have done, given myself a half a percent chance better to get to where I want to get to, and I just don't want to look back and not give it everything I've ever got to. So, yeah, well we, so you know we have a very international field um, every week on the LPJs. As a matter of fact, this week here with our time, we had 19 different countries represented. Think of that. That's you know a lot considering you know 72 players. But um, so we're very proud of the international flavors. And I know you played against several international players. I mean, who would you say is your biggest competitor um, week to week? My biggest competitor week to week. I mean, right now. I've always kept those three players in mind right now, which are Lydia Ko, Jin Young Ko, and Nelly Korda. Okay. And then we, <laughs> those are the top three, mm -hmm. and then they've always, they've stayed up, the, up top for years. Mm -hmm. And I've seen their game, the consistency, Jin Young's iron game versus Nelly's ball striking, driver off the tee to Lydia's short game. I try and see how I can improve to get to where they are and their mindset on how they approach the game. And that's kind of how I learn by playing with them. And sometimes I play with them and I go, I have a long ways to go. 
Mm -hmm. um, I see why I'm not there right now as consistently, or I sometimes go, okay, I'm not that far off. Mm -hmm. So, I'm, you know, I've definitely asked a player that's not even in the top five, that's actually probably 100th in rankings, and I said, how do you, how do you make your putting practice so consistent? And I'm pretty sure that was Brittany Altamari. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to know was because I said, do you practice your timing? Because it's so consistent. Mm -hmm. And I loved that tempo and that rhythm. Isn't she a teammate of yours? Is yes, Sohanka? on Sohanka. Yeah. And she actually came up to me and said, why would you ask me how to putt? And I said, because you're a good putter. <laughs> That's a good reason, right? Learn from, from the ones that know. Yes, but sometimes a lot of players don't have that confidence. Like, you guys are watched at. You guys are looked at. We, we do watch who's really good at what you do. Just because we're in such a negative sport sometimes, thinking that we could be better, we forget what we're really good at. And you've always told me to be very proud of the things that I've done well and reflect on it and that's what I've done I went okay that putting speed was great um, I must have misread it and then I recorrect and then go to the next one it's funny we talked about that in the clinic too didn't we look in the mirror and give yourself a compliment once in a while and not just always look at the things that you know didn't work out so sometimes you gotta give yourself a little pat on the back I mean we're all you know, we're all perfectionists in a way. We always want to, have, you know, great shots all the time, great pots, but sometimes just reinforce that good feeling and not just always think about the drive that you missed. So, um, should we, what do you think? You want to open it up for some questions? We have, um, do we have a microphone or maybe just a loud voice? Please raise your hand. And I mean, this is a one time opportunity here with Danielle. Yeah, we have one over here. Shy. <laughs> Expressionist person. I, I get very frustrated and very, very upset on the golf course. Um, I mean, there's a different level of getting upset. You can't affect other players. That's my rule number one. You can go off to the course by yourself and break a club if I want. I mean, but I've learned that I can't really hold it in very well. And the more I did, the worse I played. So now I luckily have a caddy that I can talk to about my frustration, but I have a rule that I can't talk past by the next tee box. So I get to let it out the entire way there on why I'm upset, and I could kick the dirt or whatever, grass, and then the minute I get to the next tee shot, I have to drop it. So that's kind of the rule that I have, but I do have to let it out because it does, it does upset me. I think that's good. I mean, I think it's important. I mean. We all put so much time into practice. We're so committed. We're so disciplined and dedicated. And, and of course, we want to hit good shots. So, I mean, I think it's okay to have a reaction because you care, and you have to somehow get rid of it. I think that's a really good rule that you have. But at least you, you know, you have a reaction, and then you drop it. So when you hit the next, when you go to the next hole, you have put it behind you, a new hole, new opportunity. So, that's a, it's a good rule. All right. Anybody else? Yeah. You know, actually, you gave me an advice. I don't even remember this. Annika gave me an advice saying, get better at what you're already good at and then make your bad better. Make your bad not worse. I guess, I guess what's the word? Like, it was, do you want to, she's like, I don't even know if I said that to It was, it was, whatever, you, whatever I was good at, I'm trying to even be better at it. And whatever I'm bad at, I'm trying to make that better. Not the bad part of my game, excel the good part of my game. Okay, I'm gonna simplify this. So I don't hit it long, but then I really tried to gain distance for a long time. I tried to gain weight, I tried to gain swing speed. I will never hit it as far as Nelly Corda. It is just not happening. So I just gave it up. However, I could wedge my way around that nobody else can. Who can I ask for wedge advice? Annika Sorensen, let's just make wedge game a little bit better than everybody else, and I'm pretty sure I can fight that par fives. And that's what I did. That's when my par five scoring got lower than I think. I think two shots. Yeah, yeah. you spend a lot of time with your wedges. Well, just, which you is, gave me uh, three drills to do. No, it was great. I mean, again, finding your weaknesses or finding what not your strongest yeah. suit and then make them better. 
Um, it's, uh, but you know, it takes time. I mean, you, I think when you analyze your game, and you've done a very good job at that, you have to be objective. You know, when you look at the game, it's, you know, you have to say, what, honestly, look in the mirror, what, what is it telling you? And you realize that your wedge game can get so much better. And, you know, like I said, if you hit fairways, if you hit it, you know, drive it there, you're fine. But it's the scoring thing, and you spend time doing that. So spend time on your weaknesses, everybody, and improve that. So, good question. I like the, I like the look in the mirror. Advice. Yeah. You do have to know what you're good at and tell yourself you're doing. We have to be objective. It's easy to say, well, I'm good at this or just negative, but the honest truth. Yes. How do you handle the pressure of being on the LPGA tour? Would you like to say that? Because no, it's all for you. Yeah, um, I'm retired. <laughs> <laughs> you are the GOAT. <laughs> so, um, the pressure on the, what kind of pressure, if you don't mind me asking? Like keeping my card or. So I love when people watch me. <laughs> like I love it. I love when there's a crowd. I get bored if there's no one there. <laughs> so I really wish people come and watch and we get more people. Um, so the pressure of keeping your card and all that, I just good golf takes care of everything. Um, you're out there to win, to compete, to contend. You can't control what happens 11 months down the road as long as you've tried your best and done everything you could have done. It's totally out of my control whether I finish 100th or 101st. All I can do is focus on the tournament that I want to play now. Um, there is no, hey, I need to peak only at the US Open because I learned that I can't control that. Sometimes you wake up, you just don't feel good. And how do you manage to play well when you don't feel good? Those are the things that I've tried to manage and learn. But um, the pressure of people watching me, it's fun. You're an entertainer, you're an athlete, you're supposed to I tell myself I'm supposed to be watched at, and I'm supposed to be have eyes on me. If I've, eyes are not on me and TV cameras aren't there, I'm not doing what I'm supposed to do. So I try to thrive off on it. And when the cameras get there, I go, okay, I'm doing something well right now. What is the most nervous moment you've had in your career so far? And how did it end? KPMG 18 told the tee shot. I. <laughs> I was not hitting my driver good that all week, and I knew I had to hit it in the fairway because I knew Brooke just birdied and I was tied. So if I missed the fairway, I wasn't going to be able to make it in two, and the pin was tucked in the back second tier, and wedge would have been hard to throw back there. So all I wanted to do was hit the fairway on the 18th hole, and I did. That was probably the most nervous tee shot I've ever hit. I never swung so hard and so fast. <laughs> It was good. But it worked out. It worked out. I had I went driver three wood and it was great. Driver three wood two putt. Birdie. So. Oh. It went one mic is. How big was the USAM in your development then to defend that? The first one nobody expected me to win my first US amateur. I was the underdog. So it was more fun for me and exciting for me to be in the mix. And I, I kind of bet my dad the entire way there. Uh, I don't think a lot of people know how much I gambled against my dad. So I won a TV, a bed, and a massage chair off of him that week. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> I know, that's still really bad advice to you girls, but parents will do anything if you're going to make that putt if you're about to win. Um, my final putt was like five feet against Jessica Gorda, and then I was lining up and I asked my dad if I could have a TV in my room. And he said, what? And I said, can I get a TV, please? He goes, yes, if you make it, you can get a TV. And he walked away and I made it. So <laughs> I still have that TV, it's very old. Um, that gave me a lot of confidence. And I think confidence has a lot to do with golf. So by 2011, my confidence was outside this world. Nobody can touch me. I was untouchable. I was low, I'm at the British Open. I was playing the US Opens. I won North and South. And I went into 2011 thinking there's no way I can lose. And I wish I had that kind of fearlessness now, but I think you can only have that when you don't, aren't aware of a lot of things. And that's something that I'll always treasure when I look back was because I was unapologetically fearless and had so much fun playing. So that was building character. And then I went into the LPGA and I got knocked down really hard. <laughs> got hit with reality that, hey, my game is still very mature. I gotta learn a long, long ways. So. 
I think I do want to tell these girls that, hey, you don't have to be a good golfer at 13 or 16 or 17 or 18. I mean, you started really late. Mm -hmm. um, Monica's a prime example that you could be the best in the world later in your years and start late. Like, we look at those girls that are the best players at 12 and 15, and I do get my confidence taken away. But I've learned that it's okay to never win an AJJ tournament. It's okay to just keep competing and learning from the girls, learning from the foundations and the places that you play, and then build your own character and see the see how well you can develop your character. All right. Well, thank you. I know it's so been a, um, a long day for all the... Oh, we have one more? Oh, yeah. So you're popular, Danielle. Don't go anywhere. I've experienced different types of roadblocks, but I guess, I don't know how to answer this one. Um, for me, 20s was a very tough time uh, for many different reasons. I experienced a lot of things in my 20s. I'm 30 now, I'm really happy about it. I feel like I've left all that behind me. But any roadblock that comes in my way, I know that everything's gonna be okay and everything's gonna work out. So instead of being so focused on why I'm upset, why it's not working, why I'm a victim right now, I try and tell myself to do things now. As in, go brush my teeth, get up, go do your putting drill, finish the drill, go hit balls, go work out. And I, that really helped me to get through my roadblocks in any time that something came my way because sometimes when I get caught up in that roadblock, I, you know, you get down on yourself and you can't really move on with your life. And when that happens, it just, you know, you can't get out.